play with sort of a, you know, seat of the pants approach is what we're talking about, like just really in the moment. But there are always melodic hooks in your solos, much like Brian May and Eddie Van Halen. So for you, because those are two terrific guys to mention. Those are my top two right, okay. right there. So is it a question of balance, like a call and answer kind of a thing? And if you always approach soloing that way, meaning how do the solos, you know, end up rolling out the way they do? I see the song. I see Rise. Let's use Rise, for example. And then within the song, I see another song. Right. So I see instead of it's a solo traditional way, like, hey, dude, just rip and fucking solo. I see is like, how do I tell another version? How do we go another gear into the song? Right. So I, I think about it always within the song that it could either help the song or hurt the song. So I always try to use a solo to elevate the song to go to this. <sighs> before we come back down to that last hook. I always see it as like, you know, you got your verse, you, you know, you got, oh, fucking second verse amps up, the hook amps up, the bridge, something's coming, it better go somewhere, right? right? Let's get to that third gear. Let's get to that third gear or even fourth before we kind of cruise back down to the outro chorus. So for me, I always feel a responsibility that like, look, bro, the song is your best friend as a guitar soloist. It's telling you the story. It's telling you the story lyrically and how you feel and what the, the tone of the story is. So, so dark, light, the riffs are telling you the story, the rhythm section's giving you what you need to feel something so you can float above it. So I take all those things as gifts to me and I'm like, man, my headspace is that seat of your pants is you're in that car with rise. <laughs> You're in the fucking car. You're in the studio with Rise, and you're not. You're not in there. Just it's not just a guitar. It's no longer a guitar ramp and a guitar and the pedals that we talked about. It's like now you got to emotionally go like get in the fucking car. Right. You get you coming in. This is gonna be dangerous. Let's fucking go. Let's go for a ride. <laughs> and really, that's what it is for me. Whether it's a beautiful song and a love song, are you ready to get emotional in that realm? There's a song called Hurricane where I lost one of my best friends in the song. Am I going to now rip in the fucking song that has nothing to do with losing my best friend? I'm get, doing it a, a disservice. Right. You know, so I go in and I get lost in it. And sometimes what Hurricane was in that solo was like, it's acoustic. And I played a note and I thought I was going somewhere. And then I paused for two bars because that's what I want. It just made me do that. Right. Think for a second and feel something. And then I started playing again. You know what I did? I left that space because that space was where the emotion was. Right. And so yeah. the spaces between the notes are super important as well. All the best solos do All the that. best solos. Hotel California is the epitome of that to me. Hotel California, in the feel of that, they didn't just play solo. Everything, whoop, every little thing he does at the end of a lick, when they have a conversation, it's all about the song Hotel California. Right. Talk about hooks. To me, that is the greatest solo of all time. You tell me it's not Edward. It's not. That is the greatest solo. If I could ever record something, I'd do something like that in my little world that I have. It's the conversation and the fact that you can sing it and you know it as a melody. Oh, my Lord. Right. All on the watch there to me. When Jimmy goes, like it's like it sounds like words. It sounds like it's, it's, it's words, and it's it's like its own bridge or its own vocal or its own like it's a narrative. It's it keeps going. It's conversational. It's That's the thing. Yeah. I think conversational is the word. Like you talk through the guitar. You want to be able to tell a story through the guitar. It's not just. That's why when when somebody breaks down a solo, even though I understand why. You know, I saw somebody break it down recently, like a Rick Beato breaks it down. And I know why it's got to be broken down when he started saying this. And then he then he goes, but wait, the second half of the ending there's these chords underneath and they're climbing. I have no idea that I was doing a fucking major seventh or I was doing this. I just built right. the harmonies on the vocals. And to me, it was beautiful up here, but I never clocked it. It was interesting. Like you said, I'm like, oh, my God, that's what I'm doing. I had no fucking clue. OK, so, is, so has this happened to you where you then later when it came time to go on tour we're faced with oh shit i have to like learn what i play i'm doing it i'm dreading it right <laughs> now i gotta go and do sh shows in 10 days two weeks and i gotta play the three singles and everybody's like go play him go play him i don't i gotta be the fucking i gotta get into the extreme nuno tribute band right now to go figure out what the fuck he played <laughs> i have no fucking idea even in the video 
I, and, and they'll tell you, I was fucking doing my best fucking, you know, I, I call it like my, miming my own business. I'm miming yeah, yeah. my business. <laughs> I try to do my best where I thought it was, but hell no. I got to sit it's down. Just, and... It's just simplexity. It's you know, like, yeah. all it is. It's all it is. When you said that, you just remind me, I was interviewing uh, Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson, and, you know, they would get together and make a record, and then they would have to tour, and... um learn it all do the tour and then they take three years off and then it would come time the cycle comes around again and Gaty said so then we would get in a room and he said the first week we sounded like the worst rush cover band you've ever heard in your life so but awesome. after a week we're all like we start we're starting to sound like a good cover band yeah <laughs> but he's exactly right he's exactly right think about anybody who's watching this or listens when you're learning a, your favorite band, I don't care if it's Zeppelin or you learn the new extreme song, whatever it is, and you think, oh, you're covering extreme. We have to cover extreme after we finish an album. We're building it. We're learning. We're, we're writing. We're creating. We're, we're painting. Now we got to yeah. go back and learn how to paint the fucking thing on stage yeah. because we don't really know the stuff individually. We don't really, I don't right. know what my solos were and my nuances playing a rhythm track. And it's like, I know what the lick I did while I'm playing the rhythm track, but I got to go and figure out where on the neck the fucking thing happened at that moment in 2018 or 19. <laughs> right. Well, at least it's all your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah.